Josh Giddy's off-court drama should have been a problem. Photograph with an underage girl shirtless. And the NBA don't need a crime to suspend. Ask Ja Morant. But instead of taking Giddy down, it didn't even slow him down. No charges were filed, and the NBA suspended him a zero games. The worst it did was get him booed at every arena outside of OKC. Instead, his career might be over for a different reason. The national media is so obsessed with how great OKC is, they haven't even mentioned the downfall of Josh Giddy. Out of all Thunder starters, he's got by far the worst plus minus for a reason. When he is off the court for playoff games and out of the league soon, don't be surprised. Giddy is the son of two pro basketball players in Australia. He got attention early for his talent at seven years old. It was on the NBA radar at their global academy down under. But he turned down offers to American college like Arizona to play one pro year in the NBL, just like LaMelo. There, Josh became the first NBL player with back-to-back -back triple doubles, and he won Rookie of the Year. Experts thought he would go 10th to the Grizzlies, but the Thunder shocked everyone taking him six Sixth. Everyone thought it was a reach, but the Thunder were making the best of a bad situation. The year before, they had won just 22 games, second to last in the West, a 12% chance at number one, but they fell to sixth. Horrible night for the OKC Thunder franchise, devastating. But Josh Giddy was an elite passer at six foot eight with enough time. OKC thought he could become one of the best point guards in the game. And they had nothing but time, or so they thought. The rebuild started in 2019 when they traded Russell Westbrook and Paul George. For Russ, they got Chris Paul and control of four first round picks. PG got Shea Gilgis Alexander and a record seven first. Some teams wait a while to tear it down, like the Magic three years ago, or the Wizards with Bradley Beal. Uh, the Thunder wanted to get the losing started, but Chris Paul had other plans. Instead of washed up, he was great. They unexpectedly made the playoffs and also discovered an undrafted Lou Dort. The next year, they really tanked and landed Giddy. His rookie season, they only won 24 games and drafted two franchise cornerstones, Chet Holmgren and Jalen Williams at 12. Last season, 40 wins. Now, a true contender. So to recap, a team that started a rebuild four years ago is competing for the one seed. Best rebuild ever? I mean, the Rockets started their rebuild one year after OKC. And yeah, they're better, but not close. The Pistons are in year four of a rebuild. Need I say more? So the Thunder are ahead of schedule with a Rookie of the Year candidate, a future All-Star in J-Dub, MVP SGA, and a million picks. But the one big problem is Josh Giddy. OKC is done with their rebuild and ready to compete, but Giddy has not progressed like his other teammates. Now they're contending for the one seed, getting everybody's best shot. Giddy's flaws have been exposed. It's so bad, his entire NBA future is in doubt. Oh, people were right about his passing. Dude's got elite vision and accuracy, can make almost any pass standing at six foot eight. But beyond that, he is a total liability. Watch the Dallas Mavericks this week, leaving Giddy wide open to shoot. Not only is that embarrassing, he still only makes one three a game. Dude's breaking practice shots. This absolutely kills OKC's spacing and forces his teammates into double team shots. It's really a problem when facing an elite rim protector like Rudy Gobert. Gobert can sag off Giddy and stop his teammates from driving. Josh only hits 30% of wide open threes, 30% off catch and shoot, among one of the worst shooters in the NBA. But no problem if he could drive inside. Players make up for bad shooting by punishing the rim, like Jonathan Kaminga or Russell Westbrook. Giddy is a special combination of unathletic with a horrible shooting touch. His overall offense is terrible. On defense, he has always struggled, but this year is especially bad. Watch him get beat one-on-one, -on -one, then run around like a chicken with its head cut off before giving up a wide open three. He has been playing better the last month or so, 
but the real test comes in the playoffs. If other teams can hunt Giddy for one minute and he can't respond, dude is out of the rotation. The regular season is basically a tryout for the playoffs. If you can't perform in the big games, you do not see the floor. Coaches don't care anymore. Doesn't matter where you drafted, how big your contract is. It's where we find out how these coaches actually feel about their roster. For example, the Warriors had eight players at 20 plus minutes a night last year. In the playoffs, down to just six. The Lakers had 13 guys play 20 plus minutes, just six in the postseason. So if the Thunder knew all this, why wasn't Josh Giddy traded at the deadline? Well, there were tons of rumors he was on the trade block, but nothing ever happened. I think the offers were so bad, GM Sam Presti realized it would be stupid to deal a former number six pick at his low point. So they got Gordon Hayward instead to be their Josh Giddy replacement in the postseason. But that doesn't fix their number one playoff problem. Their biggest issue is youth. A channel called Thinking Basketball crunched the numbers and found the youngest team in the three-point air to win was the 2015 Warriors at an average age of just 27 years old. The Nuggets did it again at 27 and a half years old. The youngest ever was 1977 Bill Walton's Blazers won at 24.7 years old. OKC would be even younger than that. Their average age, 24 flat. Now it's possible they shock the world and make a deep playoff run, but when it's over, Josh Giddy will be traded. The one argument for another team is, oh, he plays out of position. Maybe he comes to the Wizards or Pistons to revive his career. Well, when you look at the average career length of NBA players, it's just five years. That's right in the middle of most major American sports. But for a number six pick, that is way below what you'd expect. Or is it? Starting in 2010, there are three busts with the number six pick. Five guys already out of the league and just one Hall of Famer, Damian Lillard. The reason Josh could be out soon because he only brings one elite skill, passing. Lots of guys make an NBA career out of one elite skill. It's usually either shooting or defense. Pure shooters are like a Buddy Heel, Joe Harris, or Davis Bertans. Defenders, even worse, like Bismack Biombo or Anderson Verzal. Notice anything there? Few have long careers, most no longer in the league. So what happens with Josh? I think he gets traded this offseason to another rebuilding team like the Pistons or the Wizards, gets a short second contract, and is out. So Josh will go down as one of the big misses for a successful rebuild in OKC, along with missing on Alper and Shangun. But no matter what happens, this has been a great season, but it has exposed Josh Giddy. Yo, dude should have played in the 90s. I know a lot of y'all are done with the 90s, but you still have to see how they cheated for years in the NBA. This video exposes the biggest NBA scandal very few people have heard about.